Lesson two, link building. One more after this. You should always have a well-rounded portfolio of ways to get leads. You shouldn't just rely on one strategy. Now, when you're link building, it's the same thing. You should have multiple strategies to also build links. Don't rely on one method. And if you want to do well, you got to be consistent. It's so funny. A lot of people ask me, you know, Neil, what was the key to being successful? One, I don't think I'm successful. But two, let's say hypothetically if I was, it would be that I'm consistent. I've just been doing this for years and years, and I just never stop. I'm consistent day in and day out. The main link building strategies that I use work. As long as you end up following these, you will do well as, uh, as well. And what I want you to do is fill out your scorecard as you're collecting and building your links. That's the key. If you don't fill out your scorecard, it's not going to be as effective because you won't know if you're getting right links, bad links, good links. So really focus your time and energy on filling everything out. So here's the thing. With link building, everyone's like, oh, I'm in a competitive space. This isn't going to work. Yes, it does. Now, let's take an example for hosting. GoDaddy's in hosting. They build links. They're worth $7 billion. And it's not just GoDaddy. HostGator, when you type in hosting, it says parent topic, company, right? When you look at Ahrefs, it's saying HostGator. HostGator's crushing it. They're not as big as GoDaddy, but they're crushing it when it comes to anything related to host, hosting. And, yeah, it's super competitive, 95%. Right? That's one of the most competitive keywords out there. So let's go over strategy. Strategy number one, competitors backlinks. Go to Ahrefs, type in your competitor URLs, go to competing domains. You can start seeing all the competitors. You can type in your domain as well, right, or your competitors, and you'll see all the competing domain names. You start clicking on them on the right side, the little down arrow, and then boom, you can start looking at all their links and seeing who they're building links from, Go out there, you can see how many are do follow versus no follow, redirects, etc., and go try to build some of those links as well. You want to start exporting them to a CSV. When you export them to a CSV, you can use filterings. There's filters within Excel. And from the filters, you can then end up picking, hey, you know, here's the, what I want to look at. You can pick on how you want to slice and dice the data based on what you feel is the most important. Just makes it easier to digest. Right? Strategy number two, successful content backlinks. So you go to Ahrefs, type in a keyword, and it'll show you all the stuff that's popular, who's linking, related with the anchor text, who's linking to the sites that are at top. And you can end up clicking, let's say, the first listing. You can click on details. When you click on details, from there you can see all the people who link back to them, and then you can start hitting them up one by one. The next thing I like doing is taking that URL and then I export all of those links. And again, I put in Excel, I filter them out, and I filter to make the data really easy because it's just too much data to look at. So you just pick and choose what you want to end up seeing. And then from there, I just go and I manually hit up each of those sites and I try to build links. The next one, guest posting. Guest posting, a lot of people don't do it as much as they used to, but it still works. So you go to BuzzSumo, you type in things like New York Times or any site that has contributors like Forbes or whatever it may be. You'll start seeing different people who are writing artic articles that are really popular. You go click on it. You see where it says by David Leo Hart. I don't even know how to say his name. Then it shows you all of the articles that that author has produced around the web. You can then go take that data and then boom, you can see all the places that they're writing content on. You can Google them, you can see other economists, you can hit them up, build relationships, right? You can go to Twitter, you can find their email, you just have to keep doing searches, follow them, and then you start wanting to use our templates. And you can copy and paste this, the recorded version of this, right, that you can just go back to at any time. But the key when you're looking at the outreach template is you want to strike up a conversation, then give them advice, then continue to hit them up over a few days. And as you build a relationship, then you want to ask them for an introduction 
to their editor. That's how you keep getting these links, these accounts, or as they're writing in your Shaikamba conversation, you can just ask them to, hey, link back to you or include you if you have anything that's relevant. But it's all relationship based. And it's a huge. One thing I forgot to mention is if you do it right, you should get at least 30% response rate. If you're not doing it right, you'll get like a 5% response rate and you're being spammy. So link building search operators. When you're using Google, why not use their operators to find more websites to link to? So the basics are, hey, you can use a Google operator like in title, keywords, so you can do keyword like credit cards, in URL, links, right? So you can find anything that's like around credit cards or whatever the subject is that are around links and you can try to find these pages and build links from them. You can, there's so many operators out there, right? You just got to figure out, hey, what do you have time for? I like using the broken links ones more than anything else because I found that they create the most links. If people already link to other people in my space and the link's broken, they would gladly fix it. Heck, I'm a marketer. People use this on me saying, hey, Neil, these links are broken, and I almost always switch them out. It's really effective. That just shows how powerful it is. And you can just copy these operators on the right side of the screen, and you'll find which ones are broken, and you can just ask people to replace them with your site. You can also use operators to find guest blogging, right? Submit a guest post, submit a post, add a blog post. You can do the same thing with PR, like press releases. I found the press release links not to help as much, but still it's not too bad. You can also check out sites like Haro, help a reporter out. All great ways to get links from press. Now here's some other link building sources. Uh, one thing uh, you should end up doing is go to Ahrefs and use the open Ahrefs alerts. So you can go create an alert for your brand name. Anytime someone's not linking but they mention you, then you can end up emailing them I also love doing reverse image search. If you have customized images, go to Google, pull up your image, or you can take your image, save it. And then when you go to Google, you drag and drop the image into Google Images. And I'll show you all the sites that are taking your images. Hit them all up. Make sure they link to you. If they link to you, great. If not, go ask them for a link. It's your image. Social traffic building. This is another important part. The more visitors you get, the more likely they are to link back to you. So I like going to BuzzSumo and I'll type in keywords. I'll go look to see what's popular. I'll hit up these sites in my space and see if they can just link back to me. I'll be like, hey, I noticed you have uh, a post on six tools to turbocharge your content marketing in 2017. I know you mentioned in there like you have to do manual email outreach. I have this tool called Mailshake that does all the automation for you that you should check out, right? I'm just making it up. And if you do that, maybe they'll add a link to you. The other thing you can do is I look at, hey, who is sharing the content that's popular? So there's a button called View Shares. You see on the right, forget the arrow right there. But next to the social sharing, there's View Shares. And when you go to View Shares, it shows you all the popular people that are sharing their content on Twitter. And or if you don't pay for BuzzSumo, you can just take that URL and put it into a Twitter search box. And then I just shoot him an email saying, hey, so-and-so, I noticed you tweeted one of my favorite marketing posts from author X, Y, and Z. I actually have similar content that's coming out next week that's called A, B, and C. You do want a heads up when it goes live. And usually they respond back, but sure. And then what I do is when it goes live, I shoot him an email back saying, like, here's the URL. Cheers, Neil. And that's it. And a lot of them end up sharing the content. It's really that simple. Also, check out Facebook groups. Facebook groups are cool because with these groups, you can end up networking with other people. They already have members who are very loyal. And ask them to just share your content. Join these groups. Participate. Don't just ask them to push your content. Help the people out. Really earn the trust of the group. Don't promote your stuff more than once every few weeks. If you do that, you can generate quite a bit of traffic from Facebook groups. And you also want to connect with other admins. And like, hey, say, hey, John, I know you have a popular Facebook group. I have a popular Facebook page. If you promote me for you know a few hours, I'll promote you for a few hours, and then you can delete the post so it doesn't seem too self-promotional. And you'll both generate some traffic. Right? People do that all on Instagram all day long. It's called shout-out for shout-outs. 
You can do the same thing in LinkedIn. Join these popular groups and start promoting. So action items. Download the search operator sheet. It breaks on all the queries. That way, you, you know, I don't have to go through them one by one and you can just copy and paste them. Find backlinks and film in your link building scorecard and join 10 Facebook groups and start participating in the conversation. So now we're going to take another quick five minute break and then we'll finish it off with the last section of link building. That is awesome. So Neil, there is a question which goes something like this. Would you like to take it? Sure. Okay. So the question is, where do you find people who can build links for you? If you're looking for, if you're looking for people to build links for you and you don't want to do your own link building, just email Nate at NeilPatel.com. He'll look at everything and then he'll connect you on, you know, he'll, he'll either know places that we can build links from for you or if we can build links with our own stuff, he'll let you know. But if, you know, we can or we feel somewhere at something else or other places better, then he'll also point you in all those areas. The next question usually comes from how does Google see backlinks from guest posts compared to normal posts? Like what is the difference and is there uh, any difference in ranking in each? So for example, if a guest post from say Forbes or Huffington Post comes in and a couple links from there versus a link from say a medical website or whatnot that's relevant to the client's website, um, what would the difference be, you'd say, usually, in terms of rankings well, and how, how would Google see both? Uh, mm -hmm. If the medical site is more related to your website, they both help, but the Huffington Post usually helps with rankings quicker than the non-Huffington Post. Yeah, so we got a blog article that's doing really well right now, and, like, our rankings are increasing, and literally, like, I'm doing a lot of the things that you're saying in to do in these um, tutorials that we're teaching here and it's working right so my question is um, I want to build some links to this post um, because I think it's going to help us rank higher for some of the keywords um, you know what what's kind of like I don't know I guess link building is there's no like free lunch right but like what it, what is the easiest way you would tell us to start building links to this post yeah, what's the content on? You know, I think I might have showed it last time. It was about um, one of these little bumps on my skin, and we talk all about little bumps that women get on their skin and what to do about them. Yeah, so what we should do is, uh, what I would do is I would go find out who already has content around that, hit those people up, and just ask them to link to you because they already linked to other people and just say how you discuss something that's different than the others, assuming you do. And you notice that some of those same people will add links back to your site and your rankings will increase. It really is that simple. What about like, you know, I did some research online and looked at some sites like yours and Backlinko and other sites like that. And some of them recommend, you know, um, blog directories and things like that. And I think you said it earlier in the lesson, you know, well. hey, stay away from those. I mean, yeah. is there any free lunch for, you know, no. some blog articles that are doing well that you want to do better, you know? No, uh, there's nothing that's really easy if it was. We would all be doing it, and then Google will be like, ah, this link method is too easy. Let's not count it. Awesome. Should we reach out to, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll find um, people that have related content. But um, and who's linking to them, and I'll hit them up. But is there, um, you know, like uh, at, at what point, like for our blog, should we not pursue a link if the quality like isn't high enough? Like, how do you know when a quality is too low to get a link from? Use that scorecard. The scorecard will tell you. Sweet. All right. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. No worries. So let's. Go ahead. Um, there was one more question now, which is, so you had said not to buy links. Do uh, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Just mention why. Yeah, because Google frowns upon it. They know you're manipulating rankings, and if you get caught, they just penalize you. 
And if someone had got caught, you know, after they bought a link, is there any way out of it? Yeah, disavow the file, disavow the link. You can do that within Google Webmaster Tools, and then eventually you'll get back. Awesome. Thank you, Neil.